What's up, YouTube? Your boy, JD. Finally coming at you with a um, video of my hovercraft that I designed. And I just want to share with you guys that's been asking me, you know, about the setup and what you need to do. And um, I'm fixing to put this on Thingiverse, and you guys be able to create the same thing, too. Um, first thing I'd like to say, though, this print for this is a lengthy print because it takes a lot of supports for the main body and for the um, the motor mount. The motor mount is not that bad, but the main body, it took on my printer at a, um, I think it's set on three for the normal wall, three for the shell, and uh, three for the top and three for the bottom. It took about 13 hours to print just the main body by itself, but I guarantee you guys it's, it's totally worth it. And you guys will most definitely will uh, get a lot of enjoyment out of it. But let's dive off into it real quick. This is basically just made of spare parts. I mean, you know, most of you guys fly mini quads or used to fly mini quads, and you sure to have some motors laying around. Um, the first motor that blows up the bag, this motor here is a 1306. So I designed this to fit a 1306 motor it's a 1306 3100 kv motor and the actual prop that's in there is it was a hq 5x4.5 inch prop but obviously they won't fit so i had to cut it down to where it fit and all i did was i just kept rotating the prop around and just kept cutting it to where it wouldn't rub the walls or anything so works out perfect no whammies on that one the motor back here in the back that pushes this guy it is a uh, 1806 uh, 2300 kV motor same thing I believe this was actually a 4 inch prop and you can see it's got the little nicks and stuff in it from where it's been bumping the ground whenever the bag is deflating the prop is still turning it'll or you know an uneven surface of course it'll bump and it'll chip that prop up but same thing no issues cutting the prop down to where it won't touch I mean again I mean this is not like a a FPV rig or nothing. You don't want any kind of a little bit of vibration is not going to hurt <laughs> out of this setup. And um, I made this deck here to hold the receiver. In my case, I'm using DaVinci receiver. I mean, I'm a Walker Real fan, DaVinci radios. That's what I always use. And up here up front, this is for the battery to sit on. Uh, the battery sits here, of course, because even though it's not a plane, it's not CG stricken, but with this type of setup, when this bag deflates, if the if it's not balanced properly, what you end up with, if, like for example, you put the battery here in the front, it'll nose in the whole time, and it could potentially could flip. So you want to have the battery here on top of this tray. And the battery I use for this is a uh, 3S1000 milliamp battery and it's a high C I believe it's like a 65 C discharge on it and with that one battery this guy will run uh, about 20 20 minutes or so on a flat smooth surface I mean you guys seen the video how fast it's ripping around it's, it's pretty awesome but uh, let's dive in a little bit deeper here um, the bag that I'm using for this guy this is a a two mil garbage bag like your outdoor garbage bag a lawn a yard garbage bag real real heavy duty stuff and basically what i had to do to make this to work and i'll show you this here this is a it's a three three piece setup you have your main body then you have the the base and what you do is you take that two mil garbage bag i would recommend something heavy duty because you don't want it to tear up on you immediately but I took a two mil garbage bag and I double added it. And you want to make sure this is sitting dead center of that and cut out about a two to two and a half inch perimeter all the way around it. And then what you would do on this particular model right here, I didn't do it with this one. I hot glued the bag. You just lay it over top of it and hot glue it. And you want it to overlay to where you don't see any more of this orange here on the top. You can kind of have it flush, that's fine. But just take that two and a half inches and just lay it over top of it and glue it all the way around. The, vop, the, the version that's on Thingiverse here, um, I actually put screw holes in it. 
it's screw holes. There's two in the front, one on each side. There's one here, one on the other side, and there's two in the back. And the reason why I did that is when you end up tearing this bag up, which this bag hasn't torn up yet, because again, it's, it's so heavy duty, two mil, and it's double layered. It still inflates fine, even though it's got some rough marks on it, but eventually I will have to change that out. And because this is high glued on there, it is gonna be a major pain to separate these two pieces. So the one on Thingiverse, I would recommend to use, to use the screws. That way you can just unscrew the screw back on and just change that bag out, pretty easy. But anyway, but yeah, but once you get the bag cut out, lay it over, get all your electronics um, mounted first. And this is what the hole is for. This hole is to help to get that, um, if you got like the, the, the nut type of prop holder, you can, you know, tighten it on. That's why I put this hole right there for so you can tighten it this way to get it tight. And then back in the back for your servo, it just sits, fits down off in that slot. And the issue that I had was, and the reason why this hole is here, I could not get the control horn with it being on top of the servo to fit. So I had to put the servo in first and put the horn in on it last. And I got the hole here on top to where you can you can tighten it down. That's the whole purpose for that hole right there. So you can tighten the, the screw on that control horn. And when this sits off in there with the servo, there's a slight gap on it, which you can see it on this model here, where all the wires going down to the ESC is going to. So it's, it's no whammies with that. The servo is going to be in there pretty lock solid tight. The servo is just hot glued in spot. Um, on both of the flanges on the front and the back of the servo, but like I said, there's a gap to run those wires down to your ESCs and for the ESCs the way I did it was There's one ESC mounted like right there. It's high glued in spot Then the ESC for this motor the 1306 motor it is hot glued in spot here at the front and you don't have to worry about it hitting the ground or tearing it up or anything because it's sitting on top of this base. And this base will keep it from, you know, bumping it or tearing it up or anything. So there, there's no whammies doing it like that. Or you might just leave it loose off and out. I don't know. I haven't tried it. <laughs> I would recommend you either taping or gluing your ESCs to the bottom side of the surface. And there's no whammies with that. But anyway, once you get the bag situated on there, all the electronics are in. Go ahead and put this on top. And again, the version that's on Thingiverse has got screw holes in it. Screw this bad boy down. And that's pretty much it except for the um, the rear motor mount. The rear motor mount, what I did was I took a paper clip, as you can see on this one here. That's the paper clip here on top. And there's another paper clip that's in the, the bottom of this, which you can't see it. But it's got a hole here. So I get zoom in. There you go. And there's a hole on this side of it. So what I did was I took that paper clip and got it real hot and just stuck it through. Not all the way through, but just enough to where I could get one end into this guy and the other guy stick it up. And I just bent it over to keep it from popping back out. And that's locked in there pretty tight. It's not going to pop out. No whammies. No issues with that at all. But just take a paper clip, cut it in half if you would like, and get it hot and just stick it off in one end of this. Then do the same thing to the other side of it. And you just, uh, mm -hmm. you fit in a spot. You stick it in and make sure that this lip in here, and the same thing with this, you, you have to, um, I put a paper clip on the end of this one as well. And that's the control mechanism for the servo, as you can see right here. This part is sticking out and that's going right into the servo horn. And that is a paper clip. And that's how you steer left and right with it. it moves back and forth and that's pretty much sums it up once you do that and mount your motor it's pretty much done and um have a blast <laughs> but one thing you have to watch out for like i said i mean the way i have this set up on my radio and everything is and I had, I had to do some special mixing for this, which I'm, I'm not going to dive off into with the Dimension radio because I know not many people use the, the Devo 10 radios or anything. They use them Tyrannus or something. But the way I have mine set up, though, 
this here left and right, the rudder, that controls the steering for it. And it also controls the throttle for the rear motor. Okay. On the elevator, on this side, I use that to control this motor. So when I push up on it, of course, it's inflating the bag. And that's kind of key for when you're driving this thing around. If you're driving this around with it wide open the whole entire time and you try to turn real hard, you could potentially could make it roll over. Because you don't need to have the bag fully inflated when you're just going straight. It, you just don't need that at all. Especially when you're in a turn. And it just depends on the surface you're riding on too as well that I, I've noticed. So far, I've, I've had this in my house on the hardwood floors. And I had it outside on my... Um, asphalt driveway and it just kind of depends on the surface wise it's going. if you got like a bump or something you're coming up to you need more air in the bag to where you can like again the way i have my mix it up to where i can push up on it, get a little more air and it'll flare it up some more and it'll go across that surface real easy versus with the bait barely turned on wise it's go is it'll hit it and stop because the bag is not fully deflated so just you had to play around with that. I mean, if you guys want some more details on my radio mixing, I'd be more than happy to show you guys how I did all of that, how I got it set up. But again, this would be the steering for it, left and right. Throttle, normal throttle will, will power the pusher motor. And over here on the elevator is what I use to control the bag inflation. You know. And that's pretty much a wrap. I do believe. <laughs> but that's my setup. Again, as I said, this this print, it, it was very lengthy. It, it took about 13 hours to print this main body itself. And that was three for the normal walls, three for the top and the bottom. And it takes a lot of supports, obviously. And you want to print this, of course, to where it's just sitting flat, just like that. And all this to fill up with supports. They're real easy to get out. No issues. No whammies at all with that guy anywhere. The base requires no supports, obviously. Just a flat piece on it. And the motor mount, you want it to sit with the actual motor mount itself sitting down just like this. And do supports on it. The supports will fill up the middle. And it'll fill up where the um, steering mechanism goes into it. And that's basically about it. I mean, all together, I think it took around 20 hours of worth of printing for all three of these parts. And uh, again, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's fun. I'll put the video on Thingiverse for some of the newcomers to see um, how this thing actually operates. And I hope you guys enjoy. Um, if you have any more questions or anything, just hit me up. Be more than happy to get you guys fixed up. And another thing, I mean, if you guys want to use a different size motor than a 1306, hit me up on YouTube or my Facebook page, either one, and I can redesign this motor mount to where it can take a bigger motor. I mean, I use a 1306, but that's what I had laying around, and it seems to work out perfect as far as inflating this bag just enough. I mean, it's plenty to where I can make it almost jump off the ground when I inflate it fully. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoy, and uh, peace and love. We out.